All right, guys, real quick disclosures here. Heifman did send this out for a review. They are not paying, asking, or otherwise trying to influence me to say anything good or bad about this headphone. All thoughts and opinions are my own. Making moves, trying to get away from this life I'm living. Same old things every day. Want to change this feeling. Wasting no more time. Don't care about what you say. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh and this is the Heifman HE1000SE. It is Heifman's second highest price planar magnetic headphone coming in at $3,500. So it's definitely not for the faint of heart here. And today we're gonna be talking about it. Now, real quick note here, this is actually gonna be part one of a two part video. This first part is gonna be a review of just the H1000, although I will mention a couple of headphones in terms of comparisons in this review. So this headphone is, I believe, a hybrid of the H1000 and the Susvara. And the SE, I think, I'm fairly certain, stands for Stealth Edition instead of Special Edition, which would normally be what SE stands for, uh, because of the Stealth Magnet structure that is in here. So if you take a look inside here, you can actually see the magnets that are running horizontal to the membrane. And they're kind of rounded off rather than squared off, and this is supposed to give them a quote unquote, acoustically invisible uh, sound signature or lack thereof. So I do have to say, I really appreciate the design philosophy that Heifman takes. It's basically take the biggest driver that you can get with the strongest magnets that you can get and put it in the lightest possible housing structure that you can get. Uh, this thing only weighs 440 grams. And for a point of comparison, an LCD4 weighs about 730 grams. But despite it being on the lightweight side of a premium priced headphone, it actually feels quite solid and noticeably more solid than the more plastic constructed uh, Ananda or Aria or even the all metal Sundara. Uh, this definitely has a, a quite a, a more premium feel than all of those, which is a good thing given the cost but it still maintains kind of a lightweight nature of it. And part of what gives it the stronger feeling is the headband seems to be a little bit more clampy. Uh, the outside grill here is made of a really nice CNC'd metal. The wood on the side here, I fairly certain, same thing with the HE1000, is actually a vinyl wrap, which to be completely honest, while it doesn't seem as premium as actual wood, uh, from an owner's perspective, I would actually prefer this because it doesn't have any of the drawbacks of wood. You don't have to, you know, keep it uh, well oiled. Uh, it won't crack on you and it's not going to weigh more than it has to, which I think is part of the reason why they went with this. Uh, now, some of you are going to see that as a bit of a downside and may prefer the wood. But personally, after reviewing a lot of headphones, I think I actually end up preferring this method. Notably though, it doesn't feel as premium as real wood. Now also, and I won't spend too long on here, it comes with a box. Um, this is it. It's got the, the Heifman HE1000 SE branding on it. Um, it comes in this kind of tan finish with this uh, metal clasp in the front. And it does come with three cables, a short 3.5 millimeter, a long quarter inch, and a long XLR. So a quick note on these cables, uh, they definitely kept the lightweight philosophy. They ultimately feel a little bit cheap and for lack of a better comparative term, uh, the outside feels a little bit like a dry condom. Uh, that's just the closest thing I can equate it to. It's kind of squishy. Um, all of the cables are like that, and I'm not really a huge fan of this cable. Although if you want to be as lightweight as possible, this is a very nice cable. Although personally, I've been using a blacked out short version of an XLR to the dual 3.5 millimeter. This cable is from Periapt, so shout out to those guys. There's a link in the description down below to their website as well. Okay, sound signature. This is by far the most detailed headphone that I have ever heard at any price. Um, in so many different areas, there are headphones that have very good and very detailed experiences in particular areas. The LCD4 has amazing bass response. Uh, the HD800 in certain areas is incredibly informative. The Alex is incredibly informative. The uh, Empyrean has great details in certain areas. Uh, and this is the most uh, hearing things you've never heard before type of headphone that I've ever heard. This will, if you have enough time with it, will show you the errors of any recording. And I mean any recording, you will pick up everything with this headphone. Um, sometimes <laughs> that's not even a good thing. Um, there are a number of albums, entire albums that I have found issues with 
that I never even realized were there until the issues kind of screamed at me from this headphone. So on a personal note, this has been a little bit of an enlightening experience. Um, and for certain types of things, this headphone is very good, but there are some other things that you may not be too fond of, and that's all of what we're gonna talk about today. So a real quick note about the sound signature, I find this headphone to be the most pleasing at what I would consider to be moderate listening levels. And I don't have a dB range that uh, that would be at. The best way I can describe this volume is the level that you would set it at to hand somebody uh, the headphone for them to listen to where it's not gonna be immediately blasting their ears out. Uh, the reason why is because this headphone, it seems to scale more up in upper mid range and trouble response the higher you go in volume and the bass and lower mid range does not seem to follow as well. So uh, I like this headphone mostly at moderate listening levels, which is probably a good thing so that you're not burning out your hearing by the time you're 40. So the sound signature of this is actually more closely related to the Sundara than it is the Aria. Um, and the best way I can describe it for the most amount of people is if you took the sound signature of the Sundara and put it on the strongest steroids you could possibly find, that's what this is. Uh, it's not exact, but that's kind of the closest thing that I can equate it to. And I personally find this sound signature to be very well-rounded. Uh, it's got a little bit more of a focus in the mid-range and the top end than it does in the bass response, uh, but still it's very complete and very detailed in all areas. And that's a common theme that we're gonna be seeing throughout the rest of this headphone. So let's talk about the treble response. The timbre characteristics are incredibly rich and nuanced through different instruments here. Um, now this is also going to be the area that is the most detailed of all of the regions. So this is the area that those recording errors are really gonna peek through. This is gonna be things like, you know, weird recording buzzings that, that aren't very prominent. Um, I can pretty much pick up errors in what I consider to be some of the best recorded music of all time. But the way that you're picking them up is not like you're searching for them. Uh, see, that is the difference for me between this and other detailed headphones, is a lot of other detailed headphones, you can take a really good recording and it's gonna display the bulk of the uh, recording, the, you know, the, the well-recorded part. That's gonna be what you're hearing the most. And then the errors are something that's gonna be available to you, but you're gonna to have to kind of seek them out. You're gonna to have to look for them. Not with this headphone. This headphone will show you the errors uh, without you even necessarily wanting them to. Uh, and that, for some people, I think is gonna be extraordinarily desirable. Now, while the trouble response is very detailed, it is at the cost sometimes of a little bit of, an, of enjoyability. Um, and it's occasionally a little bit bright, especially if you have a brighter song to start with and you don't have something that's perfectly recorded. So think of like older school music like David Bowie, just for a, a brief example. Um, those tracks often sound a little bit harsh and that harshness is not at all compensated on the HE1000 SE. Uh, in fact, in some areas, it might even be slightly enhanced. So the mid-range here is again, extraordinarily detailed. It is very fast. Um, now, it's not gonna be as inherently warm as something like the LCD series or an Empyrean or the Aria for another Hyphman example. Those are gonna be slightly warmer experiences. This, in comparison, is what I would consider more, I don't wanna say more lifelike, uh, but it definitely shows you a lot more of the honesty behind the recording artists. So all those little pops and ticks in their mouths you're gonna be picking up quite clearly. Any off-tone notes are gonna come across very clear and quite unpleasant. And also you're gonna be picking up a lot of the environment that they were recorded in. Even in incredible studios, you can really pick up kind of the acoustical properties of the area that they're singing in uh, quite a bit. And sometimes that can even be a little bit distracting from the vocalist when the person editing that music may not have intended that to actually pop through, but with this, it does. Now for the majority, despite this not being as rich and as uh, lush as something like a 2C or an LCD4 in terms of the vocal response, uh, I do find that it manages to keep a fair bit of the essence of the vocalist. So I find this to be a good match of both the raw information and the raw technical aspects of a actual recording and kind of the magic that the actual vocalist can bring. It's got a good mesh of both of those. Also notably one benefit over something like a warmer experience is that this will often avoid uh, boxiness in vocalists. So songs like Not In That Way from Sam Smith 
Uh, that on a headphone that has a warm tilt is gonna get boxy and kind of bloated real quick, and it's not gonna sound all that great. Uh, that is usually mitigated completely by this headphone, uh, but it still maintains a very detailed experience where you feel the fluctuations in the voice, but without going overboard in any particular area, so long as the recording itself is not going overboard. So bass response, and I'm gonna be of a bit of a broken record here, it's ultra fast, informative, and very dynamic. Now this is also quite a bit stronger and flatter in the bass response than something like an HD800S, and it's uh, what I would consider to be far more detailed than something like that, though it does cost a bit more, but just as a point of reference. Uh, but it's not going to be as strong or really as good in the bass response as something like an LCD4, which is going to be pretty much directly competing with this. And it's something that I would actually consider to be uh, quite a bit superior in the bass response. Though this is still going to pick up those errors, but a lot of those errors are going to poke through more from the mid-range and the, uh, the treble response than uh, the errors that would be shown from the LCD4. Now, one thing that is notable about this is how good it is at maintaining the integrity of everything, even through incredibly busy bassy recordings. So you can have very busy bassy music, um, something like Mountains from Hans Zimmer, where most headphones really don't pull that song off very well. It may be overly bassy, but then you don't get the clarity of the instruments behind the bass track. Um, or you know you would have a, a song that is maybe displaying those instruments a little bit brighter than they should be but kind of shits the bed on the bass this has a good mix of clarity and detail and a transparency to the bass response that not very many headphones have and that is very impressive now imaging and soundstage is uh well imaging is spectacular i mean it's $3,500 worth 100%. You listen to a song like Bubbles and the presentation is just spectacular. The soundstage though, uh, it's, it's good, but I think there are both wider and deeper and more involved headphones at significantly lower costs. So it's not really anything to write home about, but still an enjoyable experience. Um, and that may be a, a factor in me not being able to envelop myself in the world a whole lot. So you'll notice that I'm mentioning uh, the recordings a lot. Uh, you know, I, I'm not talking about necessarily the sound signature of the headphone as much as what it's able to display. And I guess that's kind of a, an example of how I've been experiencing this headphone. There are headphones that really engage me in the music, uh, like the Aria or the HD800S. I'm able to sort of, in a way, bypass the capability of the headphone and just enjoy what it's displaying. Uh, but more often than not, and this could be potentially a good thing with the HE1000SE, but I found myself being in a position where I always knew that I was listening to something that was just, I don't know, too honest. So ultimately, what I find with this headphone is that it's not really about listening to the music, it's actually more about listening to the recording. And uh, that's a very strange experience. Uh, and, and strange is kind of the best word that I can describe it as because this is not a it's, a, it's an incredibly honest headphone. That's my main takeaway from this. Okay, so my conclusions here. Um, in some ways, I would say that this headphone is 100% worth the asking price. But I think that the reason why it might be worth it really just depends on who is looking for it. So if you want a warmer experience, if you want kind of the top end, uh, you know, super premium price, uh, I think an LCD4 might still be up your alley. If you want something that has just impeccable bass response and is going to be a very enjoyable experience and you're looking for that maximum enjoyment factor and you don't mind the weight, an LC4 is probably gonna be your best bet. But if you're a person who really enjoys seeing the errors in the recordings and wants to hear the actual recording itself, this simply is the best I've heard at doing that. Simple as that. Okay guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, my name's Josh, signing off.